It's Tuesday, August 15th, and the folks over at Blizzard Entertainment, makers of obscure video games such as World of Warcraft and Overwatch, you may have heard of those, is bringing back Battle.net, its online platform and storefront. Well, sorta. Of. In one of those cases where it seems the marketing department may have had a bit too much to drink at happy hour, Battle.net is back, but it will be known as BlizzardBattle.net, which doesn't really roll off the tongue as well. First launched way back in 1996, Battle.net was the portal through which gamers registered and sort of became the key platform for Blizzard to communicate with users and fans. But last fall, The Verge says Blizzard started moving away from the network, preferring to use Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook for outreach. That didn't sit very well with many fans, and now the company is returning to the Battle.net, as it were, but with some extra Blizzard in tow. Remember the Apple Watch? Yes, it's still for sale. And according to CNBC, Cupertino is holding super secret meetings with insurance giant Aetna to get the watch on the wrists of millions of their customers. Over 50,000 Aetna staffers already get them as work perks, so moving on to customers seems logical. But what's the point if those customers are not iPhone users? Aha! That could be the real story. Recent rumors have suggested that Apple will soon debut a new generation of the Apple Watch that will work as a standalone device that doesn't need an iPhone for internet and maybe even cell service connectivity. If that Apple Watch does come to fruition, it could mark a massive turning point in the Apple Watch's market and a possible money saver for Aetna and other insurance companies. How? For example, Apple is said to be working on real-time blood sugar monitoring tech with the watch, which would be a huge game changer for diabetics sick of poking themselves with needles. It could also improve their health, thereby lowering costs for Aetna. And of course, a standalone Apple Watch slash phone could also be a big shift for the cell phone industry, especially for people who want minimal tech but still want a cell phone. We could know more next month. So what's going to be the hottest new tech in cell phones? VR, AR, maybe, but more likely it's depth sensing, a technology that works with both AR and VR and many other aspects of our beloved pocket computers. Apple's iPhone 8 will reportedly have depth sensing facial recognition tech, and now Snapdragon chip maker Qualcomm has announced it is going all in on a dedicated Android digital vision system that's really good at knowing how far away things are. As seen in this video clip, the Qualcomm Spectra system, now in its second generation, can create a depth-accurate representation of this person playing keyboards. Pretty cool. This kind of technology, when applied to security systems, greatly cuts down on the ability to spoof and fool 3D facial recognition tech. But it could also be used to quickly map a room or space for use in a VR or AR system. The dual camera system basically mimics how our eyes and brain work and can be integrated into a cell phone's camera system. Indeed, Apple and a growing number of other phone makers are already outfitting phones with dual camera setups, ostensibly for photography, so it won't be too long until they're put to use in AR and VR applications. Hit the link for more on this emerging tech and get more tech news updates at digitaltrends.com on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our latest episode of Close to the Metal, our computing podcast where we go in-depth with Vega GPUs. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.